Hi everyone and welcome back to another crafting video. In today's video, we're going to learn how to make an Easter tote bag. An Easter tote bag is a great alternative for those who still like to have Easter baskets but tend to find that the older kids are no longer into the traditional Easter baskets. So this Easter tote bag is perfect for everyday use, for putting together their own Easter basket, and you can even customize it with their names or a monogram of their initials. So let's get started on the materials. Now here are the materials we will be using for today's project. First thing I'm gonna grab is my Tech Wrap Craft weeding tool. I like to use the straight head for this project, as well as our standard tack tech wrap mat and for our puff final I will be using the puff lilac color open up the puff final rolls I like to just poke a hole on the top using my weeding tool and just peel off the plastic wrap In this case, with these rolls, you're going to want to carefully unravel the paper that is around the roll because inside of this paper, there are instructions on your heat settings and your time settings for the vinyl. It also shows you the recommended cutting setting for this. So since we are using our Cricut Maker, we're going to follow the Maker instructions and for this project we'll just be using a regular cotton tote bag this particular tote bag is from the make market brand from michaels so before we go ahead and start our project on our computer or on any device that we will be using we want to make sure we open up the tote bag and see how much workspace we have available. Love having this grid silicone mat on my table because it just helps me measure out so much better. Coming over to Cricut Design Space, I searched up Easter monogram letter for this project and I'm going to go ahead and use the letter G for this project. Taking the sizing that I measured from the bag, I'm going to use it as a reference for the size of the image I will be using. So once we go ahead and make it, you're going to want to make sure you mirror the image. The reason why you want to mirror the image is because with any heat transfer vinyl, we're going to cut on this white side because the purple side is what we want on top. So we're going to have to make sure to mirror our image and cut on the white side. You can either mirror your image on your canvas or you can click it right here before cutting. I tend to find it easier just mirroring it before we cut. And now we're going to head over to browse materials or as if you have it already saved, I like to use everyday iron on and place a little bit more pressure on it just because my blade is dull. So now that everything is all cut, we're going to come back to our workstation and start weeding out this design. A tip that I like to give a lot of people when working with puff vinyl is the idea that you're going to want to make sure that your lines are very far apart from each other. If you have any design with puff vinyl, the lines tend to go away because of that puff effect. So right now you can see that the space between my lines are pretty thick, but we're gonna look at them again when I have already applied this puff vinyl onto my tote. Now 
With heat transfer vinyls, there tends to be a tack that holds the vinyl together. However, this tack is not very strong, which is a good thing because it's strong enough to hold together, but not strong to the point where it's hard to weed out and it pulls on the other pieces. This is weeding very smoothly. Now that we brought our Cricut press out, we're just going to take a look at the settings for this vinyl. So you're just going to start your heat press and adjust the settings accordingly. Another important tip is to always make sure that you iron the surface you will be working on. The reason why you want to do this is because you want to make sure you get any wrinkles out before actually pressing the heat transfer vinyl. In order to get your image centered on your tote, you should definitely use any references and any guides that you have. So for this tote, I have two squares on the top of our tote that I will be using as a reference of how to center my image. Now let's start pressing. Because my image is larger than the surface area of my heat press, I'm going to press in parts. So I'm going to do the top part first just to make sure it's secure and doesn't move around for the rest of the parts that I will be pressing. As you can see here, many of our lines and circles have kind of disappeared because of that puff effect. However, I love how this texture looks on this toe. Thank you so much for following along on this tutorial with me. If you guys like this video, please go ahead and give it a like. And if you would like to see more tutorials like this, follow our channel. Bye!